ionic chain chromatography is a very important uh, separation technique which is used for the separation of ionic solutes where the ionic solutes will be having affinity towards a charged ionic chain resin the resin may be cationic chain resin or anionic chain resin if the resin is cationic chain resin uh, the separation will be uh, for cations and if the resin is anionic chain resin anions are going to be separated we can uh, draw the principle of ion exchange chromatography uh, for the separation of solutes by hplc hplc principle is very simple uh, we will apply a greater pressure in order to increase the flow rate of the mobile phase so that the analytical time to complete the separation will be reduced to the maximum extent so we will be using a pump if you look at the schematic of uh, hplc instrument a pump sample uh, solvent reservoirs the sample injector column detector and display unit these are the some uh, important components of hplc instrument if we adopt the principle of ion exchange chromatography for the separation of solutes uh, by hplc uh, we may have to use the detector for the detection of solute molecules after they eluted from the chromatography column and once they reach the detector we will be commonly using electrical conductivity detector in ion exchange chromatographic separation the electrical conductivity detector will be functioning based on the property of solute molecules solute molecules will be exerting the conductivity property because they are ionic they are charged so whatever the uh, electrical conductivity uh, resulted for different uh, number of solutes that is going to be detected by means of electrical conductivity detectors so while using these electrical conductivity detectors one should be very careful about the mobile phase because mobile phase will be moving continuously towards the detector the commonly used mobile phase in ion exchange chromatography will be either sodium nitrate or hydrochloric acid or sodium hydroxide or sodium chloride uh, whatever it is even sodium sulfate can also be used because these compounds will be easily undergoing ionization to produce cations and anions so either cationic species or anionic species will also reach the detector they also possess their own electrical conductivity and this electrical conductivity will interfere in the detection of the solute molecule so we cannot properly identify what is the solute present in the sample we have to eliminate this problem this conductivity caused by the mobile phase species is called as background electrical conductivity and this is true whenever we use electrical conductivity detector in order to eliminate this background electrical conductivity of the mobile phase we will be using a separate column that is called as suppressor column or we may not use a separate column we can use a single column that is going to be the uh, separation column in the separation column the separation not only going to be the taken place but also the suppression of the conductivity of the mobile phase is also going to be happen so this will be discussed under ion chromatography so ion chromatography is nothing but ion exchange chromatography in which the ionic species are going to be separated so in ion exchange chromatography the electrical conductivity detector is going to be employed commonly as i told you so these mobile phases will dominate by their own electrical conductivity so this electrical conductivity is going to interfere say for example dilute solution of hydrochloric acid if you are going to use as a eluent hydrochloric acid can be used as a eluent in order to elute either cations or anions whatever it is by using cation exchange resin or anion exchange resin whatever it is you will be using hydrochloric acid as a eluent hydrochloric acid is a strong electrolyte and uh, it is also a responsible species for resulting electrical conductivity so whatever the detector giving the electrical conductivity that is not only for the solutes ionic solutes but also for hydrogen ion and chloride ion so this background electrical conductivity of hydrogen ion or chloride ion must be suppressed so the presence of large concentrations of hydronium ion that is hydrogen ion and chloride produces electrical uh, conductivity that is called as background electrical conductivity and uh, this maximally uh, prevents the separation of the analytes by means of electrical conductivity detector 
so how to minimize this uh, background electrical conductivity or uh, the conductance of mobile base it is very simple we have to suppress the property of uh, the ions of the mobile base we have to suppress the property of ions of the mobile base and the concentration of the mobile phase may be high or low, whatever it is. So don't bother about that. If the concentration of hydrochloric acid is going to be 0.2 molar or 1 molar, whatever it is, it is going to be used as mobile phase. So HCl is a strong electrolyte. It undergoes dissociation to get converted to hydronium ion and chloride ion. This hydronium ion as well as chloride ion are a good species to result electrical conductivity and these are going to interfere in the detection of the solute molecules therefore we have to suppress uh, the property electrical property of this hydrochloric acid or any other mobile base we are using we have to suppress uh, their activity in such a way that there must not be any background electrical conductivity this will be done in two ways the minimization of background or mobile phase conductance will be done in two ways. Number one is by using a, a separate column and that column is called as ion suppressor column. So we will be using a separate column and this column will be present in between uh, the separator means the analytical column and the detector. The suppressor column or a second column will be present in between the analytical column that is going to be the separator where exactly the separation of ions are going to be taken place, whether it is anionic chain chromatographic separation or cationic chain chromatographic separation. Uh, this column will be containing the ionic chain resin uh, for the purpose of uh, separation of uh, either anions or cations. If you are going to separate cations, the resin present in the separator or in the analytical column is going to be cationic chain resin. If the analytes are anionic, the resin present in the analytical column or the separator is going to be the anion exchange resin. So ion suppressor column is uh, placed in between the analytical column and the detector. If you use cation exchange resin in the analytical column, the ion suppressor column will be containing the reverse for that. That means anion exchange resin. If the analytical column or the separation column is containing anion exchange resin, uh, the suppressor column is going to contain the cation exchange resin. Vice versa is applicable here. And sometimes we need not to use the second column or a suppressor column. Uh, straight away, uh, we can use a single column. In the single column itself, the uh, separation of the solute will be taken place. Not only the separation of the solute, but also uh, the electrical conductivity will be generated only for the solute by the detector in such a way that the activity of the mobile phase is going to be suppressed in this single column itself. So let us see one by one. So what is ion suppressor column? You can see here, what is ion suppressor column? So ion suppressor column is a second column which will be, which will be used to suppress the property of uh, the mobile phase. Because if the property of the mobile phase is not suppressed, that is going to be merged with the property of the solute molecule one will not be in a position to distinguish which is the analyte peak and which is the mobile phase peak. So mobile phase peak will be definitely interfering with the analyte peak. Therefore, it is very, very essential to suppress the background conductivity or the background signal with respect to the mobile phase. So this column will be placed, as I told you, in between the analytical column and the detector. And this column is used to remove the mobile phase electrolyte ions without removing the solute ions. So whatever the stationary phase you will be using in this suppressor column, the solute molecules will not show any partition or will not show any interaction with the stationary phase or solute molecules will not show any exchange equilibrium in the, in the resin which is present in the suppressor column. Look at here. Let me assume hydrochloric acid as a mobile phase for the elution of number of uh, cationic species number of cationic species or anionic species we will be using hydrochloric acid as a uh, mobile phase. Hydrochloric acid undergo dissociation and ionization to get converted to H plus or HTO plus and Cl minus. This is the resin present in suppressor column. So you are using cationic chain resin in the analytical column for the separation of cations. So analytical column is containing cationic chain resin. 
you are eluting the cations by passing hydrochloric acid as a mobile phase hydrochloric acid will be a mobile phase will be a yellow end so this will be playing a role in such a way that all those solutes which have exchanged by uh, uh, the ion free ion of the resin free ion of the resin are going to be taken out from this hydrochloric acid so uh, the resin present in the resin present in the suppressor column as the second column is anion exchange resin let me assume this is hydroxide form of the resin hydroxide form of the resin hydrochloric acid moving through this second column or the suppressor column hydroxide is having less affinity towards this tetramethyl quaternary ammonium ion this free hydroxide ions are having less affinity towards tetramethyl quaternary ammonium ion so therefore as a result of the lesser affinity of this hydroxide ion towards the uh, te, uh, trimethyl quaternary ammonium ion chloride will be showing maximum efficiency in order to exchange oh minus ion in order to exchange oh minus ion so chloride will be placed in place of oh minus ion and h plus ion will be released along with the solvent front so h plus plus oh minus you are going to get h2o so not only the suppression of hydrochloric acid is done but also a neutral solvent we have obtained and we will be completely uh, uh, achieve the elimination of the background interference from the mobile phase by converting hydrochloric acid into water so analyte cations whatever present whatever present during the elution process they will be eluted as uh, hydroxide salts instead of chloride salts so if you do not have any an exchange resin in the suppressor column hydrochloric acid is going to be the mobile phase hydrogen ion is going to exchange all those cations so cations are eluted out in the form of chloride salts if we have not used anion exchange resin in the second column or in the suppressor column but you have used the suppressor column therefore the electrical conductivity must be destroyed for hydrochloric acid not only electrical conductivity is destroyed we have interchanged the form of the eluate eluate means analyte analytes are going to be eluted out in hydroxide form so this is how the suppressor column will be going to function and this is okay for cation exchange separation similarly if you take anion exchange separation uh, for the separation of anions by using anion exchange resin you should remember two things anion exchange resin will be used for the separation of anions ion suppressor column will be used to uh, eliminate the background interference or background conductivity of the mobile phase so the suppressor column will be containing cation exchange resin so in cation exchange separation this will be vice versa the analytical column will be containing cation exchange resin suppressor column will be containing anion exchange resin here the analytical column or the separation column will be containing anion exchange resin and the second column or the suppressor column will be containing cation exchange resin uh let me consider other important mobile phase which will be commonly used in ion exchange chromatographic separation is sodium carbonate sodium carbonate is an alkali it is a base it is a base it will undergo dissociation or ionization completely to get converted to sodium ion and carbonate ion so if you have the suppressor column with the cation exchange resin you can look at the exchange of hydrogen ion by sodium ion so exchange of hydrogen ion by sodium ion takes place and the carbonate is moving out of the chromatographic column so it is taking the hydrogen ion so that hydrogen ion is having greater ability to react with carbonate and uh, uh, to give h2co3 carbonic acid this will be in equilibrium made to water and carbon dioxide so this will have negligible uh, conductivity so mobile phase is not going to interfere during the detection of the solute based on the measurement of electrical conductivity detector so h2co3 carbonic acid is going to be the weak electrolyte therefore our objective has been fulfilled so that the background electrical conductivity of sodium carbonate is suppressed by means of this suppressor column or ion suppressor column or second column so you should remember about this ion suppressor column that if you are going to use electrical conductivity detector and cation exchange resin you are going to use for the separation of cations the suppressor column must contain anion exchange resin 
where the NAN exchange resin will be involving in the exchange process and the NAN of the NAN exchange resin is going to be replaced and the cation of the mobile phase will react with the NAN of the NAN exchange resin to produce a neutral solvent or inactive solvent so that that will not exhibit any electrical conductivity. So this must be the important point you need to remember always. So why and how we are going to suppress the electrical conductivity by means of this suppressor conduct uh, column. Similarly, the sodium carbonate property is going to be suppressed by using cation exchange resin in the form of H plus, in the form of H plus. So what is ion suppressor column? It is a column used to minimize the conductivity of the mobile phase in ion exchange chromatography. So very important, it is a second column. It is also called a suppressor column, which is used to suppress the electrical conductivity of the mobile phase in ion exchange chromatography. We, uh, we can use single columns uh, without using the second column. Uh, we can eliminate the problem. It is very simple. It is very, very simple. Uh, if we are intended to use the second column, we will not bother about the concentration of the mobile phase. Whether you can use 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid or 1 molar hydrochloric acid, anyway, we are going to suppress the electrical conductivity of that hydrochloric acid and even sodium sulfate, sodium chloride, sodium nitrate, the sodium carbonate, whatever it is, we can suppress the electrical conductivity. But here, uh, you have to use a resin which is having very low capacity for ion exchange. The ion uh, exchange resin will be having very, very low exchange capacity. Therefore, very less number of ions are going to be separated. Very less number of ions are going to be separated. Not only the low ion exchange capacity of the resin is required, but also you have to prepare the mobile phase in very low concentration. If the mobile phase concentration is very low, ultimately the background conductivity will become minimum. It will be sufficiently small. So if the conductivity resulted by the mobile phase, whatever the conductivity resulted, that is majorly due to the solute which is reaching the detector. So therefore, without using the suppressor column, by using the single column, single column, why do we say this term is? Because uh, not only the separation is going to be taken place, but also we are going to use the ion exchange resin which is having a lesser ion exchange capacity and the yellow end we are going to use will be having very small concentration. Therefore, the background conductivity will become minimum and there will be a clear distinction between the conductivity of the solute and conductivity of the mobile phase. So one will be in a greater situation to distinguish which is the solute eluting and what is the conductivity of the mobile phase we are able to distinguish them. So this is how a single column can also be used. And this is about uh, the electrical conductivity detector. When we use electrical conductivity detector, the suppressor column or a single column will be used to suppress the electrical conductivity. Apart from that, uh, electrical conductivity detector usage is limited because uh, if the solute is responsible to produce the electrical conductivity, satisfactory electrical conductivity, then uh, it is okay. There is no any problem of using the electrical conductivity detector. So apart from electrical conductivity detector, even we can use UV visible absorption detectors as we can use in HPLC. Here also we can use UV visible absorption detectors. And one condition must be holds good here. The solute which is coming out of the chromatographic column or out of the analytical column or out of the suppressor column must absorb either ultraviolet or visible radiation. The detector, UV absorption detector, uh, will be giving you either absorption or transmission. Absorption of light radiation by the solute, means the ionic solute, or the transmission of the light radiation after some amount of the light getting absorbed by the solute molecule. So we will measure either absorption or transmission. So if the species is not capable of absorbing the light radiation, UV or visible radiation, you know the condition. If the species is conjugated, the ionic functional group is attached to the conjugated system, then those organic molecules can also be separated. If the species is not conjugated system, it will not be having the ability to absorb the UV or visible radiation. So even D, uh, DD transition will also become responsible for the absorption of visible radiation. If a species is not belonging to any one of these either categories, means 
it is a void of conjugation or uh, it is not uh, going to undergo any dd transition then we cannot expect the absorption of ultraviolet or visible radiation in those cases we can have an alternate arrangement in such a way that if the solution is not going to absorb any uv or visible radiation <clears throat> which is reaching the detector uh, we can take the uh, variation in the absorption between the absorption of the mobile phase and absorption of the solute molecule because mobile phase is going to be a uv uh, visible light absorbing species mobile phase contains a uv visible absorbing species so when a solute band passes through the detector the decrease in absorbance of the mobile phase is measured so that is going to be the difference if the mobile phase is having the capability to absorb the light radiation belongs to uv or visible region uh, in the presence of solute it is going to be diluted therefore definitely the absorption or transmission is going to vary though so this varied absorption or transmission is due to the solute present in the mobile phase so these type of detectors are also used in ion chromatographic technique so let us move on to some other applications of ion exchange chromatography because it is widely used uh, in analytical and preparative works mainly in analytical chemistry uh, say for example water analysis as i explained yesterday determination of total cation concentration uh, separation of uh, chemically similar species uh, removal of the interferable uh, species removal of the interferable species we have discussed and separation of chloride from bromide and separation of uh, uh, zinc from magnesium separation of iron aluminum magnesium manganese cobalt zinc and magnesium all these things we have discussed yesterday so apart from them even we can use this ion exchange chromatographic technique for preparative work so the analysis of amino acids proteins peptides nucleotides pharmaceutical samples and other clinical samples can be done by means of this uh, ion exchange chromatographic technique so you can assume 20 principal amino acids present in blood serum can be separated very easily within few hours we can separate within very few hours we can separate so 20 principal amino acids none of the techniques are most versatile when compared to this ion exchange chromatographic technique for the separation of uh, these 20 principal amino acids present in blood serum whatever the biological material you consider within a small interval of time we are able to complete the separation by ion exchange chromatography because of the ability of this technique for the separation of charged species and uh, we have uh, light absorption detectors and these detectors are very very selective for the detection of organic compounds because amino acids or proteins they will be containing carboxylic acid functional groups or amine functional groups so we are able to convert them into coo minus and h plus or nh3 plus aminium cation or carboxylic anion can be easily converted uh, present in the proteins or peptides and even in sugars nucleotides pharmaceutical compounds consumer products all these are going to be contained with organic compounds so separation will become very easy by using this ion exchange chromatographic technique principle remains intact whatever the origin of the sample whatever the group of the sample you are going to subject for the separation principle uh, remains the same so many uh, blood samples can be subjected especially for the separation of albumin and immunoglobulin g you know immunoglobulin g it is an antibody isotope uh, it is a protein complex uh made by peptide chains it will be having two identical heavy chains and two identical light chains they are arranged in y shape so immunoglobulin g is nothing but it is an antibody isotype it is a protein complex made by two identical heavy chains of peptides and two identical light chains of peptides they are arranged in y shape so even the products of recombinant dna uh, fractions can also be def, uh, separated by means of this ion exchange chromatography and even the enzymes can also be uh, subjected for separation quality control laboratories uh, will be utilizing this ion exchange chromatographic technique for the separation of solutes 
and even uh, biotechnology laboratories so will be utilizing uh, for the separation of dna fragments or uh, even nucleic acids nucleic acids and like this many uh, variety of the analytes present in blood samples or urine sample or saliva sample or serum whatever it is so we can subject in order to eliminate the interferences followed by the separation of charged species we can utilize this ion exchange chromatographic technique you can have a chromatogram simple chromatogram here uh, which is presented for showing the separation of seven anions by using anion exchange resin so all septium anion is a brand name of the anion exchange resin column is containing anion exchange resin is having a dimension of 100 by 4.6 mm 100 cm is the length 4.6 mm is the id internal diameter of the column so 100 cm column 4.6 mm id of the column is used mobile face used is 0.7 millimolar sodium bicarbonate and 1.2 millimolar sodium carbonate a mixture of 0.7 millimolar sodium carbonate and 1.2 millimolar sodium carbonate uh, we have used as a mobile face and the flow rate is adjusted at 1 ml per minute temperature will be 40 degrees celsius ion suppressor column will be used and electrical conductivity detector is used so within 12 minutes fluoride chloride nitrite bromide nitrate phosphate and sulfate in the concentration you can look at 2 ppm 4 ppm 4 ppm 4 ppm 4 ppm 6 ppm and 6 ppm very less concentration so even uh, in the presence of very very lowest amounts of the solutes present in the sample you can have a reasonable height of the chromatographic peaks so the resolution is very good there is no overlapping and we are able to distinguish the retention times of the uh, each and every peak for fluoride chloride nitrite bromide nitrate phosphate sulfate etc so ion exchange chromatography can be used for the separation of ionic species especially uh, by using anion exchange resin we can separate these seven anions and uh, even you can uh, extend the application of ion exchange chromatographic technique for the separation of monovalent divalent trivalent and even transition metals because they are charged they are charged a uh, universal cation exchange resin which is in hydrogen form will be used which is also having 100 cm by 4.6 mm column tartaric acid and oxalic acid mixtures are used as mobile phase 1 ml per minute will be the uh, flow rate and conductivity detector will be used so uh, lithium sodium ammonium potassium monovalent cations uh, nickel zinc divalent cations cobalt 3 magnesium 2 manganese 2 calcium 2 so all these multivalent species multivalent species including transition metals can be separated and one of the in, uh, interested parameters here is the concentration you can look at the concentration only 0.5 ppm 0.5 0.8 5 ppm 0.35 ppm 0.7 ppm no other such high sensitive analytical technique is available for the separation of these species because these species are colorless we cannot utilize either spectrometric technique or fluorescent technique because of Uh, uh their group is inorganic they are inorganic compounds no question of aromaticity no question of conjugation so this is the only suitable technique for the separation of ions even uh, uh, as an example antifreeze analysis we can do and carnitine and choline in vitamins we can separate especially sodium l carnitine choline and calcium only trace amount of the calcium able to be detected by means of uh, this technique so by using electrical conductivity detector anion exchange resin is used to separate antifreeze uh, components such as glycolate phosphate formate fluoride to sulfate you can look at the chromatograms very very little amounts of these species will be present so it will be very prominent a technique for the separation of whatever the uh, sample origin if the analyte present in such sample is ionic is charged whether it is positively charged or negatively charged you can use either cation exchange resin or anion exchange resin provided you have uh, a suitably framed ion exchange uh, separation procedure you can subject it for the analysis so within 14 minutes we are able to separate all those 10 components present and here within 30 minutes we are able to separate all those four components 
including inorganic species, this is also going to be charged and 3 ppm is going to be the concentration. So that's it about uh, the ion exchange uh, chromatography. So in ion exchange chromatography, the solutes are going to be separated uh, based on the relative affinity of the charged species towards the ion exchange resin, where the cation exchange separation and the anion exchange separations are going to be performed by using cation exchange resin and the anion exchange resin. So cation exchange resin, how uh, we are going to prepare the cation exchange resin, how, how can the anion exchange resin can be prepared, what are the starting materials, and what are the resin properties, uh, what is the selectivity of the resin, so all these things we have discussed, followed by some important applications of ion exchange chromatography, and uh, even how to determine the total ion exchange capacity of the resin, it is very, very uh, important because ion exchange capacity is going to decide uh, the selectivity of the ion exchange resin, whether this is suitable for the separation of the charged species or not. Based upon the selectivity and capacity, we will be in a position to decide whether this resin is suitable or not. So uh, this is about uh, the ion exchange chromatography.